Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. Near Cultus Lake Road, near Chilliwack, I have always been a believer in Sasquatch. However, I was never wanting to actually see one, as it was a childhood fear. I watched a documentary when I was 10 years old and had bad dreams ever since. In one dream, he cornered me in a cave and threw a big log in at me. This woke me thinking I was dead. Anyway, my wife and I and two kids went camping at a provincial park near our home. It was the middle of June. One afternoon, my wife convinced me to go for a hike down one of the trails nearby. It was just after lunch. We walked down the road 100 feet and turned onto the trail and went straight into the bush behind the camp. About 200 feet down the trail, I was looking up at a hill that was covered in fern. There were not many trees for about 50 yards. The sun was shining on this hill. The trees were very tall, so not much direct sunlight got through in most places. My camera was still in the bag at this point. I noticed what looked like a big stump at the back of the sunlit area. All of a sudden, it got up and started running away, very quickly. It ran about 100 yards in my view, away from the direction of my campsite. I was able to see its foot when it came up the back, and it didn't look huge compared to the rest of him. I saw a long thigh come up level as it ran. It was very muscular in the back. I could see how the hair came to a V-shape at the spine. The color was like a grizzly bear. The last thing I heard was a big crack of a tree. I looked at my wife and said, let's go. I picked up the smallest boy and we all ran out to the road. My wife and kids saw nothing. They weren't looking. I saw a park guy emptying garbage bins. I went to him and said, I just saw something big and brown in the brush. To my surprise, he said quite calmly, was it on two legs or four legs? I responded, two. He said, okay, I'll tell the rangers. And that was it. He didn't seem too surprised or disbelieving. I went back with the camera to find tracks and found a rotten log all torn up where I saw it first. Soft ground, scratch marks, where the tracks would have been. I found deep tracks 15 inches long where it ran. I'm six foot three and had to jump between them. There was a loud crack. There was a deadfall broken in the middle. I stepped on it and it didn't move. We went back a year later in the fall with my father and tried a different trail close by where we noticed another ripped up log and several large stones at the side of the trail that were turned over. The park was closed at that time, and I would have needed a machine to do that. My dad said he thought he could smell a horse sweating. I said, that's enough for me. I'm out of here. On to the next one. In British Columbia. On a forest access road, now gated and blocked off with rocks, that leads to a flat area and apparently an abandoned gravel pit. At the back of the flat area on the west side is a steep gully with a rock-strewn slope behind it. The creature was sighted in the bottom of the gully, then seen climbing the slope. This happened at approximately 8.45 a.m. The location was just off the Hope Princeton Highway at Nicolum Creek, about six miles east of Hope, British Columbia. I'd entered a small access road to an abandoned gravel pit located about a hundred yards from the highway. I was looking for firewood to load into my pickup to take to a campground some distance away. I knew that the road maintenance crew frequently dumped fallen trees and occasional roadkill deer carcasses at this location. 
after leaving my vehicle, I had walked about 150 yards along the edge of a steep-sided gully when I noticed a large, dark, reddish-brown animal at the bottom of the gully about 50 yards away. It seemed to be standing on its hind feet, scratching or digging at something in the small bushes. Having its back towards me and its head obscured by overhanging foliage, I noticed the fur seemed to be longer on the back and that the underside of its paws or hands were light-colored. Having a respect and heeding warnings about meeting grizzly bears in the wild, I decided to quickly return to my vehicle. At this time, the animal must have sent me as it turned in my direction. I was still not able to see a head or face because of tree branches. Moving hurriedly toward my truck, I glanced back over my shoulder in time to see the animal climbing up the steep slope on the opposite side of the gully on two legs, and it seemed to be pulling itself up by grasping the bushes and trees with its forearm. I had the impression this animal had a small head for its bulk, unlike a bear, which has a large head for its size. It moved rapidly up the slope and disappeared into a stand of lodgepole pines at the top of the gully. I had the impression it moved in a humanoid fashion. I don't know to this day what it was. The closest thing to a Sasquatch I have ever had the privilege or opportunity to see. The site is a level area in the bottom of the Nicolum Creek Valley between mountains covered with coniferous forest. On to the next one. Between Esterville and Grand Rapids, Manitoba, in Canada, three men saw a short-haired Bigfoot that walked onto a road only 100 yards from their car. This was near Catamick Lake. The creature was two meters tall, covered in short hair. There was another sighting of a Bigfoot shortly afterwards. In this later sighting, the creature went for the witnesses, forcing them to flee. On to the next one. This was reported by the chief of the Poplar River Indian Band that many of his people have sighted on the reserve many times a large, hairy animal that walks on two legs. Poplar River is located approximately 76 miles to the south of Norway House. An investigation was conducted and the results are as follows. Several people were interviewed and they all stated that the animal was approximately 7 to 8 feet tall and was very broad at the shoulders. It had the general body structure of a man only many times bigger. A foot cast was taken of the foot impression that was left behind by these so-called monsters and is held at the detachment. It measures 16 by 5 inches and has only three toes. Its fur is a glossy gray color and it has white hair on its head. They stated that it was very powerfully built and one man reported that he thought swimming. To date, there have been no further reports of sightings in our area. It should be noted that this so-called monster seemed very inquisitive toward people and would come around the houses on the settlement and look in doors and windows. On to the next one. Between Because Jor and Lac de Bonnet, Manitoba, a youth saw a seven to eight foot tall Bigfoot approaching his parked car. The next day, Footprints that were 15 inches long were found in the snow. On to the next one. My grandparents had a nice spread of land north of Atlanta, which butted up against the Chattahoochee National Forest. At the time, my parents and I, as well as my two siblings, lived in the northwest corner of South Carolina. Generally, once a month, we would travel over to Grandma and Grandpa's house for a weekend visit. It wasn't all that far, and we really enjoyed spending time with them at their house. Grandpa was retired military, 
and my grandma had never held a job. That's how things were in that daytime, and it seemed to work out very well for everyone. My memories are that of going to my grandparents' house as far back as the late 50s. My grandma would always have a peach pie and peach cobbler waiting for us when we arrived. She was a fantastic cook and baker and always had delicious things in store for our stay. There are two things that I must tell you, coming into this whole Bigfoot thing. First of all, what ended in 1968 had begun in 1967. The second thing is that I never saw anything. I'm simply telling you the story that my grandpa told to us. My grandparents had lived in this home since I was about two years old. I was the youngest of three children. At the time of my grandfather's encounter, I was about 12 and well able to understand what had happened and what was being said about the booger, as Grandpa called it. My grandpa was not a farmer in the least, but they had purchased this parcel from a farming family who was selling the farm. They just happened to buy the lot, which had the home on it, and the rest of the land was sold in pieces. I don't recall exactly, but I want to say they had about five acres. One section of the property had old peach trees on it. These trees were big enough and sturdy enough that I could climb around them as a youth. It was from these very same trees that my grandma used to pick the peaches with which she made all these delicious peach dishes. I remember hearing my mom talking with my grandma on the phone in 68 about someone stealing all of the peaches from their orchard. My mom and dad were later talking about it at the dinner table, and so I had heard the whole story for myself. Apparently, my grandma had only picked a small amount of peaches, and the two of them had planned to go back out the following week to pretty much harvest the rest. They said the week following, when they had gone out, their six trees were picked clean. There wasn't so much as a worm eaten fruit left to be found. Nothing was on the ground either. My grandfather was fighting mad when he saw what had happened, but there was nothing he could do in his mind, except to place the blame on the neighbors or their children. If it was the kids, he couldn't make any sense out of the children coming home with hundreds of peaches without asking them where they came from. Things were very different in those days, and it would have been a very shameful thing on the part of a parent to overlook such a thing. My grandparents actually had to go and purchase peaches that year so my grandma could bake. It was during one of our visits the following year that Grandpa divulged his plan. We could tell that he had been fuming about what happened the whole year and was determined not to let it happen again. He had set up two very concealed blinds in the wood by the trees. He said that he didn't care if it took him a whole month. He was going to stake out the trees. If someone came in to steal peaches, they were going to get a load of bug shot in the butt, for sure, and the longer he had to wait, the more shot they would be on the receiving end of. I will tell you right now that he was on a mission. When the season had arrived, I remember my mother telling my dad how his father had spent the whole day in the blind, according to Grandma. This was repeated for days around the dinner table. I distinctly remember it was a Thursday evening and everyone was in the house because it was raining. The phone rang, and when my mom answered it, she was very quiet, apparently just listening intently to whoever was talking. My dad said, who is it? She held up her finger as if to say, hold on a minute. Then she blurted out, he shot a what? Followed by, what the heck is a booger? My dad stood up and grabbed the phone, asking to speak to his father. He was pacing around the kitchen and rubbing his head as he spoke to my grandpa. I will remind you again that this was Thursday and this weekend happened to be our weekend to go visit. For the sake of time, 
I will pick up on when we got to their house on Saturday morning. Grandpa was crazy excited to tell us everything that had happened. He took us straight away out into the yard by the blind he was sitting in. He said that he had spent almost the entire week out there waiting for something to happen. And on Thursday at five, it did. While sitting in the blind, he saw this giant booger, as he called it, coming out of the Chattahoochee forest. He watched it walk about an eighth of a mile right up to the trees, where he said it actually stopped and was looking at the fruit. He said he had heavy shot in the Remington and immediately hit the booger with two shots. It jumped into the air like a cat on a hot tin roof. With that, he stood up and the booger was already heading for the trees. He said he fired three more rounds and was sure he had hit it but it just kept running. He said he couldn't believe that the booger didn't go down, but it was a long shot, and he knew that he hit it squarely, and at least twice, if not more. Now, my dad had done his best to explain what a booger was on Thursday night, but now we were listening to Grandpa's version. He said the booger was bigger than a horse on its hind leg, and covered in brown fur. According to him, it was a thousand pounds and as wide as his Volkswagen. When he hit it with the buckshot, it jumped five feet off the ground, at which point he had hit it again on the way down. Even after hitting it, the booger ran faster than a racehorse across the field and into the trees. It was during the run that he tried to lead it with three other shots, hoping to hit it again. He kept imitating what it looked like when it jumped and we were rolling with laughter. We know now that what he shot was a Bigfoot, but back then the locals called them boogers, and the Cherokees called them the hairy men. They never again had an issue with the fruit on their field, and Grandpa talked about that day until he passed. On to the next one. I am retired now, and have been a cross-country runner since my days in high school track. Looking back on my life, I have been running for well over 45 years, and counting, and I have been living in Washington for almost 12 years now. When this sighting occurred, it was in the summer of 2014. I cannot tell you how many miles that I have logged, but there is no shortage of beautiful trails to get lost on in my area and around the state. I had run this particular trail so many times that I lost count. Truth be told, I don't really think I ever started to count. I always leave and finish early in the day when I run. Many of the easier trails to run on become somewhat crowded during the day, and I try to avoid that at all costs. I found myself coming up this grade at a fairly steady trot, where the trail is very narrow. The trail at this point appears as though it was formed more by erosion than anything having to do with man. It's somewhat of an elevated area with many large rocks covered in moss protruding from the side of the trail and within the trail itself. It very well may be that this trail was actually constructed many years ago in this fashion, but I have no knowledge of that being the case. To my right side, as I was running, the grade of the hill goes up rather steeply and is literally covered with everything from trees to ferns and anything in between. To my left-hand side, the hill was falling away from the trail at a lesser grade, with more of the same type of forestation being visible. Ahead of me, on this segment of the trail, I could see relatively far to the extent of, say, 200 feet or better. It was mainly to my right-hand side that my visibility was really hindered by the growth. As I ran, there were two large trees growing alongside of the trail that were next to each other, maybe a foot wide. It was then that, unexpectedly, a large brown Sasquatch came marching out from behind these two trees, stepping directly across the trail in a singular long bound and continuing down into the woods on my left side. 
I was running and breathing heavily, and this thing didn't as much as peek at me. It was walking, but moving so fast that I couldn't have caught up to it on my best day running. As I said before, this trail looked like it was formed by erosion. There was about a three-foot-tall worn edge on the right side, and off to the left side, there was an equally deep drop-off, which was also about three feet. This Sasquatch was walking down a steep slope and quickly, with one long step. It had descended some six feet in elevation and perhaps twelve feet or more in length, crossing the trail and ended up on the descending slope. I stopped dead in my track. It seemed as though in a matter of seconds it was down the slope a hundred yards and gone from sight. I moved up alongside the trees that I had walked behind because I had seen its head pass above a broken branch on the one tree. I stepped up and held onto the tree in an effort to judge its height. I'm five foot ten inches tall, and with my arm fully extended, I was a good three feet short of the mark. The worn part of the trail here was about two feet wide, and when he stepped over it, which happened very quickly, it appeared like its foot was almost as wide as the trail when in the air. The hair on its head looked like an old Rod Stewart haircut. It was long and shaggy, hiding any details of its head from my view. I can also state this emphatically, that when this beast walked by, there was an instantaneous stench in the air of something like fresh manure. It was nauseating, and it lingered for several minutes after it had passed. The most amazing thing was the ease with which it made this long and downward stride, without so much as a hitch in its step. You or I would have had to leap with all of our might and more than likely would have ended up with a broken ankle or worse. It had to have weighed a thousand pounds and come down the hill like it was floating on air. It was absolutely remarkable to see in every sense of the word. If you have an encounter you would like to share, you can reach me by submitting it to the email in the description box down below. Also, if you would like to send in a physical letter of your encounter or any fan mail, I also have a P.O. box, which you can find in the description box down below. I love just hearing from all of you, so those options are available if you ever feel like reaching me. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!